I come back to you on this, the, the point of the importance of institutions, and to some degree, as I would call it, sort of loser's consent, if you like, and I'm wondering whether uh, faith in the institutions of the United States are be is beginning to fall to pieces. I mean, let's look at the Supreme Court. I gather you can correct me if I'm wrong on the polling, you're, you're the expert, but only about 28% of registered Democrats approve of the court. It's about almost half of Republicans, but again, only almost half of Republicans. Until 1968, almost all confirmations to the Supreme Court were by acclamation, but since 1968, things have become much more contentious. It's a political battle. I think I'm right in saying that you have to go all the way back to 1990 when a Supreme Court justice was appointed who wasn't of the same ideology as the president who could nominate them. That was uh, under George Bush Sr., George H.W. Bush, nominating the relatively liberal Stephen Breyer. Are Americans now losing faith in their institutions? I think if you look at Congress, the president of the Supreme Court, they all have approval ratings below 30%. This is a catastrophe of confidence in the backbone of the American Constitution, no? I think it is. I think it, it is a crisis, an institutional crisis or a crisis of faith in institutions. And it's been going on for decades. It's been it's been trending in one downward direction. Uh, I don't know if we've hit bottom yet, uh, but it's, you know, the Supreme Court, for example, the late 80s, with the infamous uh, Robert Bork nomination, uh, when the Democrats were able to weaponize his record um, and force his withdrawal. And so in every Supreme Court nomination on either side since, there's been the potential for that kind of a political catastrophe, right? Um, and, and what it's meant is that in the, so in the past, pre-Bork, uh, the nominees were folks who had a really strong record, whether you agreed with everything or not. These were really, really serious legal figures with, in generally, some politicians thrown in. Um, who, you know, who, who did have, um, uh, you know, there was hard copy on what they thought on many, many issues. Since Bork, it's all about choosing someone who can get through. And preferably that, some, that someone has a light record. They've left a, a light footprint, if any, uh, because it's less to attack. And if, and, and if they, they do that, then it's important then to attack them personally, as we saw with the Kavanaugh nomination, uh, you know, on, under Trump. Uh, so it, it's, changed, it's changed a lot. And given the, the, the general tribalism that's, that's, that's been coming on so acutely in recent years, you have a situation where everyone looks at the Supreme Court in terms of what do I get out of it? Do they agree with me? Not uh, Will they uphold the Constitution? Will they interpret uh, the legislation according to the Constitution and measure it by that yardstick? No, no, it's about do they agree with me already on issue X, Y, and Z that may or may not come up before them. If they agree with me, I want them nominated, I want them to, to get on the court. If I don't, then I do not. A and the Democrats are so frustrated that, the that there's been a quote unquote conservative majority on the court, uh, which some conservatives would, would beg to differ on. But given that on paper majority, Democrats talk very openly, have did during the campaign about stacking the court, right? Uh, just simply changing the rules so that you get on enough people who are going to vote the way you know they want they're going to vote your way, and then you're set. Uh, and so there is a, a movement, whether it's changing election laws, as happened in 2020 in many states, which was pivotal to the eventual outcome, uh, whether it's stacking the court, all these sorts of things are ways of taking down the guardrails, removing safeguards in an institutional sense, so that we can sort of we, we we can rig the system so that our side either is guaranteed victory in a in an electoral sense and or in a legal sense, constitutional sense, or at least the odds are heavily in our favor. Yeah. So it becomes very difficult in practice for the other side to get back in power. Right. This, so yeah. this is this is very clever, cunning stuff. Uh, that that rides the wave of growing tribalism and a, and a greater polarization and politicization of of society, and this is this is why we are here, where we, where we find ourselves, uh, with no obvious solution because mm -hmm. there are so there don't appear to be any tangible incentives for any of the parties, figuratively, figuratively and literally, uh, just, you know, characterized to change their behavior. Well, if you enjoyed that conversation, why not watch one of these other videos? And while you're here, remember to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll never miss out on a single IEA broadcast.